Hey everyone. So I told Tony that I didn't make slides for this, but it's not true. You ready? And I have to watch out not to fall off the stage. Why is that? No, undefined behavior. Undefined behavior. So this, this uh, lightning talk is not about my perception of undefined behavior. It's yours. So I want to hear what everyone's favorite undefined behavior is. So it's audience participation. Olivier, what's your favorite undefined behavior? Oh, the prohibition on infinite loops. The prohibition on infinite loops. I love it. It would be a shame if something were to happen to Don't it. <laughs> it would be a shame. Uh, someone recently wrote a paper uh, called Infinite Loops are Not Undefined Behavior. What do you think about it? Strongly against. Strongly against. Nice, nice. You should talk to the chair of SG1. Is the chair of SG1 in this room? Oh, it's you. Ah, oh, damn it. Good okay. luck with your paper. <laughs> Marshall. I have a least favorite undefined behavior. That's not the, pe the talk. Marshall, what is your least favorite undefined behavior? When things work exactly the way I expect them to. Oh, that's surprising. <laughs> Richard, what is your favorite undefined behavior? In a hashish expression, if a macro expands to the word defined, behavior is undefined. <laughs> <laughs> So if a macro expands to the word defined, the behavior is undefined. <laughs> that is most wonderful. Thank you. Someone else. Y'all have hands, right? You didn't exercise undefined behavior, so you can raise your hand. Timmer. Yeah, sign into overflow is great. Sign into overflow is your favorite because undefined because behavior. Like, if you don't get it wrong, like you're going to be faster. Because if you use unsigned integers, it has to do the correct thing. If you do signed, you can assume a lot of stuff that's not going to happen and simplify the math expression and your code is going to run faster. It's great. Wonderful. I don't care about safety. I just want my code to run really fast. Yeah. So you like okay. signed uh, an yeah, integer overflow. Great. Great. Yeah, it goes fast. Yeah, it goes fast. It goes vroom vroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you did it already. That's, I got, I got I, I'm putting you on pause. I, there's a hand here, a new hand. I yes. Like type punning. Type punning. Like type. But square, so like unions or sure. which one? Because there's a few. The, the Carmack fast inverse square, you said? Yeah. Yeah, that one's cute. Yeah. Can do that with bitcast. No, but bitcast is not undefined behavior. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Bitcast does have undefined behavor. Yeah, if, if the value representation is not a value representation for the type, it it, That's be. true. That wording is a mind bend, right? Because we now know that sign integers are two complements, so we know yeah. there's no bit cut and that's not a valid float and also not a valid int. That is true. That cannot happen, so we're fine. And it compiles down the same thing and it's not UB. But there's still UB in BitCast, in some cases. Case. Not in that case, yeah. Well, in that case. Case before that was in the standard. Yeah. <laughs> but unions are still good. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Uh, if you pass a null pointer to mem copy, even if size is zero, it's undefined behavior. Null pointer to mem copy, size is zero, is still undefined behavior. It, did they get rid of that in the latest C standard? Not yet. OK. Robert, where are you? Robert's not here. He's our C guy. He would do it. Richard. Unsigned integer overflow? Unsigned short. Unsigned short. Sorry, repeat that? Yes. So multiply together two unsigned shorts, it's then an int and it can overflow. That is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I hate it. <laughs> ben. My favorite is like real, like legally. It's basically like call any function in the standard library in a manner inconsistent with its contract, even if. The implementation doesn't matter. It's like, that's undefined. You don't even have to call them the, the functions in the, the standard library to have undefined behavior. You can just take their address. That's also wonderful. But anything that breaks that contract, all bets are off, right? Yeah. Assuming the function actually exists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's integer overflow in modulo, which is just handy. Integer overflow in? In modulo. In modulo, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. It's great. Modulo is end divide, right? Negate, yeah, which one? Which, which is your favorite negate undefined negate behavior? In negate in min, that one is wonderful, yeah. It's your favorite, second favorite? Um, he had my, other, my favorite, which was the, uh, oh, the, sorry. the mem copy of, uh, of Zero. the pointer with yeah. bytes. Nice. Hand over there, I don't know who it is, I see a hand. Uh, templates with no valid instantiation. Templates with no valid instantiation, those are great, we love them. IFNDR, they're great. Yes? I like casting away const on a const object. 
Casting away cons in a const object. That is always <laughs> great. And it's funny. It's great. Hand over there. Can't see who it is. I can't recall if it's been fixed in a newer standard, but in C++17, it is impossible to, technically impossible to implement a std vector. Oh, yeah, but you launder. You just launder it away. It's fine, right? Not even with launder, because <laughs> it, you cannot traverse the bytes of the array when they are individually. Yeah, you don't have pointer arithmetic. Because no pointer because arithmetic. Because of the buffer was a, uh, not created as a, a raw memory, not a, an array of an element. So you yeah. don't have pointer arithmetic. Yeah, thank you. I saw a hand there earlier. No more hands, no more undefined behavior. Yes, Nobody Tony. Nobody said um, um, uninitialized variables. Uninitialized variables, yeah. On the stack. On the stack. Um, because I was working in well, unnamed place, um, and Microsoft called us up and said, in the new version of Windows, your program crashes. And they're like, "There's this, this thing on the stack is uninitialized, and now the stack's not zero anymore, and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, oh, crap. And we're like, Oh, we're about to release a new version. We'll just fix it. And like, we don't want to fix the old versions. And Microsoft said, it's OK. We've taken care of it for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> so they did Microsoft, that. when you start up any program in Microsoft, it checks whether it was ours and then fixes the stack. <laughs> oh. So is that where the expression, it was photoshopped, came from? Uh, it wasn't no? Photoshopped it wasn't photoshopped. I'm sorry. You're no. close. <laughs> <laughs> else yes. Yes, at the back. Let's shift integer. That one changed a few times. It changed a few times. Now it's okay, yeah. We changed it a few times. We like to like change stuff up. It changed with uh, two's complement. It changed back to the old thing or what something. If I do shift like 33? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. But the sign is like, yeah. Yeah. Shifting uh, a number of bits that is equal to the number of bits of the size that you're shifting. Yeah, but that's the one that we changed. We change it back and forth. It's great. So it's one more that's okay. like. Keep shifting. Keep shifting, yeah. <laughs> yes, over there. I'm sorry? Running out, of stack space. Running out of stack space. That one is wonderful. I love it. Although Chandler was talking in his talk earlier uh, about how Clang sometimes checks whether you're going to do that and then forks itself. It's awesome. <laughs> yes. Uh, passing a temporary to a coroutine. Passing a temporary to a coroutine. Beautiful. I think I saw another hand here, or is it just the light? No, no hand. I, I, at the back, at the back. Yeah, uh, standard uh, Specializing standard template types. Nice. Some you, can, some, some you can, like hash, right? Hash you can. Vector of oh, vector of bool? Yeah, please do that. <laughs> I mean, you, you should. It really needs to be helped. <laughs> Tony. This is sort of, I mean, I'm stretching things here, but the idea of like the, your stack goes or whatever. Um, like it says in the implementation, like in the standard, that your implementation can have any, you know, it's bounded by some kind of um, resource, right? Yeah, there's an annex for that in, in C, though, and we inherit it, I yeah, think. Yeah, but there's, there's really no minimum, like there's minimums for like how long characters, uh, yeah, yeah. variable names, but there's no minimum for like, hey, I couldn't compile your code because I'm out of resources, right? I've, I've run out of memory, I can't compile your code. Well, there's limits for nesting and for uh, yeah, things like there's that. No limit yeah. On, I just couldn't compile your code because yeah. it was too big. Already. That's true. So I have a valid compiler that just says, and you only have to put out a, a, any kind of diagnostic. So my compiler always says, your code is sus. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just out of, out of space. It's yeah. undefined. Well, yeah. It's, I, I'm, not, I'm just saying I'm probably right anyhow. <laughs> it's true. It, it reminds me of Jing McNeilis, I think, had a thing on uh, Stack Overflow like 10 years ago or something that the moderators, because it's Stack Overflow, said like, that's not okay, but because people found it hilarious, they left it there, where he had a, a picture of valid like, you know, hello world, in main hello world, whatever, and he said, why doesn't my code work? But it was, it was a, a PNG file. Right, and so it just like handwritten like hit main whatever thing, and so the answers for that are amazing. I recommend going to Stack Overflow just for that one question, um, and seeing it. And the the moderator answers as well. It's great. The, the other one, Stack Overflow question that everybody should read is, why shouldn't I parse HTML with regular expressions? Ooh, not parsing HTML the with regular there expressions. Are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I see a hand over there? Yes. So at the back. Function declare concept where if 
undefined behavior, if for no combination of arguments, it can actually be evaluated at compile time. I just love declaring suitability problems as, you know, undefined behavior. Well, we change that in experience. Oh, Timur said we broke it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have another one. The effect of modifying, trying to modify string that's wrong with undefined behavior. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I like I, I like changing string literals. Yeah. <laughs> Especially argc, uh, argv. Sorry. Yeah, that one's great. Anyone else? How much time do I have? You got all the time. I got all the time in the world. <laughs> so it's all up to you. Yeah, Tony, you had no, a hand. No, I, I have a question. If there's un, I, and there is, there's undefined behavior in the preprocessor. Is there undefined behavior in every phase of, you know? Richard, what do you think? Probably. Probably. He says yes. Richard says yes. But it's preprocessor, though. The Canadian version is preprocessor. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We're in America right now. I'm sorry. I am also Canadian. <laughs> Whatever. Any other hands? Yeah? Over there. Yes, please. Define hash defined keywords. Hash defined keywords. Yeah, those are beautiful. Like register, right? So yeah, just how to find register. Find find struct union. That one's great because, like, what do you get with access control and all this stuff? It's really nice. It, it's a great way to do, be able to do reflection as well. You can access things just directly. It's awesome. You should do that with the pound it embed under under file. You just <laughs> pound the file. Like, yeah, you just do that. It'll be great. Yes. Uh, casting an array to a function pointer. Oh, casting an array to a function pointer. That sounds fun. Anything else? Yes, at the back. Yeah, so, so since my last one was next, um, how about a question? So th there's, there's, one that, there's one that bothers me. Somebody had said earlier about uh, 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 specializing, temp specializing templates in the standard library. There's one that has bothered me for a very, very long time, and that's numeric limits, because it says specifically in there that you can't specialize something if you change its defined behavior. And numeric limits explicitly says that it's for integral types. And the standard specifically says what is an integral type. So can you, is it undefined behavior to specialize numeric limits for a user-defined type or not? Marshall, what do you think? I think lots of people do it. <laughs> lots, lots of people do it. Yeah. I think so too. Well, I believe that the intent was that you should be able to specify it for you, specialize it for your own type. You might not have said that in words. <laughs> that <laughs> wasn't what I said. <laughs> All right. Yes. Specializing type traits for your own types. Yes. Depends on the type trait. Don't specialize. It's trivially complicated. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. That's a, lot, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. In a similar vein, using basic string with a template argument that's not actually a char like type. Oh, but that one's beautiful. You can do so many things. Yeah. Basic string is the best vector. Yeah. <laughs> like basic string of bool is. That's <laughs> what you should do. I have tests that test basic string with many, many different pod like types. Yeah. It's basically because it used to be it was just had to be a pod. It had to be something you then copy around. Oh, but mem copyable is very different on different like yeah, versions, I right? People yeah. Keep changing their I know. The, it's the SG1 people who keep changing it. <laughs> it's that's this guy. It's trivially copyable. Yeah. You keep you guys keep touching it and then we argue with you and then they argue with us. So so we get upset yeah. when this definition changes. I know. You guys should talk. Can so cuz Atomics likes mem copy. Hmm? I want us to have the provenance you be like all clarified. I I love mm -hmm. provenance. Well, you, you guys should send a paper that works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what else? Yes. This is something that I unfortunately cannot unsee after having seen it. Or un C++, you mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, so there was a class, uh, have a constructor, which obviously was calling a name function. And at some point, it was starting just setting a pointer onto a uh, byte buffer and just calling the init function. So it never went through the constructor. Mm. That's I went, nice. I once That's went through the constructor twice. How about that? Ah. Basically, basically, the object didn't uh, start its lifetime. 
nice. It's a nice vacation. <laughs> yes? Um, casting null pointer to a specific type, calling a member function on it that doesn't use any kind of internal variables. Oh, that one's beautiful. People love to do that one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, cla yeah. it's a classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a static-ish. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, and then but then testing in the static function whether this is zero. That's also great because that's defensive programming to like. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah, and then the compiler eliminates your check, and you get upset. You post on the internet, and then yeah, that's that's how it works. What else? Yes, over there. And so my question was, well, what is a user defined type? Does that include like vector and string? And so I asked people in the standard library, in the standard committee, yeah. and library people all told me, no, no, those are not user defined. You need to find but people who are working on core said, yeah, of course, those are user defined. Did you try passing your own allocator? <laughs> it's always a way. Any other hands? <clears throat> yes. It has been postulated further that uh, those uh, uh, those sort of hallucinated arbitrary values could then uh, cause uh, 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 for if you divide by uh, a relaxed atomic that has hallucinated a value of zero, that could cause your program to have undefined behavior because the values in that atomic that nobody ever put there. So it's ChatGPT for your. C++ code, or for your memory model, right? It hallucinates values in your memory model. It's nice. I, I, I like out of thin air, and it's the most beautiful theoretical UB that has never, ever manifested, ever. Yeah, it's nice. But we like talking about it. Is there another hand? Yes. Yeah, that one's nice. Yeah, that's, that's a weird bit of work. <laughs> All right. Any other hands? I don't know. I, I think, think we're good. I think I we're know, good. Maybe slightly over five minutes. But it's okay if we're over time because yeah. it's undefined behavior. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Now, but when you hit my lightning, <laughs>